Today I'd like to look at what happens to your barrel after you leave it sit for an extended period of time, even with a little bit of oil inside the bore after it's been cleaned. I've prepared a video where I'm looking down the, uh, down the barrel of a, of a barrel that was fired last year and cleaned after it was fired and then stored for the year. I'm using a little CCD endoscope to look inside the barrel. It's just a cheap, uh, cheap camera. I got it for about uh, $14 on, uh, on eBay. Um, if you want to look them up, just look up USB endoscope and you can find one like that. The video quality is not the greatest, but it is possible. It does show us uh, what we're looking for. So as we pass the endoscope up the uh, barrel, you see that the, um, the rifling looks, um, you know, clear and sharp and, uh, you know, looks decent. But as we get to a certain point along the barrel, you'll notice a very distinctive, uh, very distinctive attitude change to the, uh, the way the rifling looks. All of a sudden, it starts to have a very corroded look to it. It's got a kind of a white chalky film on it. Um, so that signs, uh, I've interpreted this to, to be oxidization. It's the, the copper, there's microscopic amounts of copper that is left in the barrel after it's cleaned. And uh, that copper is reacting with the base metal of the barrel. And um, the oxidization occurs uh, as a result of what? Oxygen, right? So what you're seeing as we get closer to the muzzle is it gets worse and worse and worse the closer to the muzzle we get. The way I read this is that the oxygen is coming into the barrel through the muzzle and as we work our way down the barrel um, the oxidization gets progressively less but it gets to a certain point where um, it just kind of begins and I wonder if the barrel was left longer if that would uh, work its way down the barrel even further. So This is my interpretation of what, what's happening in the barrel. It's the only explanation I have for a barrel that was previously cleaned and uh, now looks uh, quite fouled and it's, it's not uh, carbon buildup in there, that's uh, oxidization. So um, you can actually see it um, kind of snow plow as the, uh, as the camera gets pushed through the barrel. So what I'd like to do now is talk about what can we do um, to protect our barrels over the long term. Um, there's a very simple solution that I've come up with. Um, where you use cotton butcher string. I'll show you how to make a bore mop that can be used to plug the barrel. So this is what I'm going to show you now. All we need to do this is we're going to need a length of uh, probably some heavy fishing line, monofilament fishing line, and a spool of cotton butcher string. Now you want to kind of, you know, you want to uh, different kinds of butcher strings are, are sold. Some are stranded, some are, some are like one big wind, and others have a bunch of uh, finer threads that are wound through it. It's actually several finer strings wound together, okay, kind of like that. And this one doesn't work as well as just using the finer butcher string or something that's just a single wound. Now what I have is a stick, just a, just a stick out of the garage that I found, and I've got notches cut. So from the end of the stick to where the notch is, is about right, a little bit longer than the length of my barrel. For, for This is for a 223 and this one is for my 308. So all I've got to do is take my, my spool of cotton butcher string. Now, this particular butcher string is fairly fine. There's, there's different diameters that you can buy. So the number of winds has to be determined based on um, what kind of butcher string you have. So if you get fine butcher string, you're going to need more wraps um, to get a good snug fit in the barrel. So I'll show you how to do that. Now, what I do is I basically just take the butcher string and I hold it in my hand like this. So I got a little bit of the butcher string and then I wrap it around the stick. So I'll go 20 times for the um, 20 times for the 223. So we'll do one for the 223. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now I'll cut that off. And I got to tie off the end. So I'll just tie a knot in it right about the same point as where the end is. No fancy knot, doesn't much matter. And then remove the string from the stick. Okay, so now what we have is the string all stuck on the end of the stick, right? So we kind of, we got control of it. And now I'll basically take this, the tag end and tie it around, around the string that we have here. Just to kind of tie it, keep it from getting tangled. So I'll come through one way, come through the other way. 
can basically just tie it off. So I'm going to make a I'm going to make a little knot here. It's hard to do on camera. Okay. So what I have is a knot now. So the end is is kind of tied off. I have a little loop. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse this. I'll put the the other end on here, just basically so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the strings into groups of three. Okay. So I got about 20 wraps, so I could have about six or seven in each. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna basically loosely braid them. Okay, so just braid them back and forth a little bit. And all this is gonna do is keep them from getting tangled up because you got all these loops and it'll get, it will get tangled up over time. So um, as you work with them, if you braid them a little bit, just a little loose braid, just enough to keep them from, from, uh, from getting tangled up amongst each other be easier to handle later, you'll see. Okay, so we got a few braids in there now. And so now what we have is kind of a, a nice rope that's kind of easy to manage. And I got a length of uh, a fishing string here, where is it? Okay, right here. So, so here's some monofilament fishing string. We'll just pull that through the loop. And we'll tie this off, and this will be basically how we how we feed the string into the barrel. Now, by the way, the the um, the string that I'm using, this monofilament line, it's um it's fairly straight. But the reason it's straight is because I used a blow dryer to take the coils out of it. So um, if you have any, if you're using cotton, um, some monofilament line and it's got a lot of coils in it from being on a spool, just pull it tight. Take a, t double it up, pull it on a doorknob, and uh, pull it tight against the doorknob. Just pass a blow dryer up and down, and that'll get the coils out. Okay, so now what I have is a little, um, I can cut this tag end off here. We don't need that anymore. Maybe I'll tie it off a couple more times, just to keep it nice and neat. So now here we have a nice bore, bore, uh, um, bore mop, you know, it's a cotton bore mop. So all we got to do now is get this into our barrel. So the basic idea is that now we've got a big cotton swab. This is just cotton swab. That's all it really is. And what we're going to do is we're going to soak it with some hops number nine or whatever we want to use to leave in the barrel. And uh, we pull it in the barrel and we can leave it like that for a year, leave it for two years. It doesn't much matter. So whatever oil you use, make sure that it's a barrel friendly kind of oil. And uh, hops number nine is something that is uh, said to be safe to leave in your barrel for a long time. So basically, we just put a little bit of that on this uh, on this thing and pull it into the barrel and just leave it there. And that way, there you can leave the the gun for uh, long term storage with a little with this protecting. So what this is going to do is you're going to leave some chemical in the barrel, um, which will um, act to break down the copper and uh, break down any corrosion that's in the barrel. In addition, the the cotton itself will plug the uh, travel of oxygen, right? The oxygen can't move in and out of the barrel, and if oxygen can't move in and out, you can't oxidize, can you? So you've got a you've got protection on a variety of levels. And hey, you know what? Worst case scenario, it's a quick way to clean your gun. That's not going to clean it very well, but at least it's uh, kind of a quick quick patch out, right? So it's a handy little thing to have. So uh, what I'm going to do? I'm going to put it in a little jar with a little bit of uh, hops number nine, and we'll uh, we'll pull it into the barrel. So here I just have a little, uh, an empty uh, food jar from some, some Tostitos. And uh, what I'll do is I'll put my, uh, my little uh, bore mop inside the jar. Right? Just put it in the jar. And we'll add a little bit of uh, hops number nine to it. Now, of course, the more you add, the more wet it's going to be, right? So how wet do you want it? And just kind of squeeze it out so that it's got a good saturation of the stuff on there. And then, uh, as we pull this, as we pull this out, we'll kind of squeeze it to control how much is left. So we're just kind of wringing it out, right? We're gonna get some of this on our hands. I don't know if that's safe or good for you, but uh, ooh, it's a bit of a mess. But here we are now. We've got a little bore mop that's wet with uh, hops number nine. Okay, and here's my two, two, three. So. What I got to do now is I got to feed the the uh, mono, monofilament line up into the barrel. So this will be a bit of a trick. 
to do on camera. So now what I'm doing is I'm feeding the uh, monofilament line up the barrel to pull the, the, to pull the uh, bore mop up inside. So, so there it is. Now the monofilament line is coming out the end of the barrel. So there it is. Now I'll pull on that. We'll try and get this on camera. So I'm pulling the bore, the bore mop up into the barrel, see? So it's going up inside. And I can pull it through until it comes out the end. So here we now have the barrel is completely stuffed with the bore mop from, from one end to the other. Um, hard to see, but uh, it's there. So, so now we have a bore mop inside the barrel and just sticking out the end. So this barrel now uh, can be left for, uh, for a couple of years and not have any uh, concerns about what's going to happen. You've got a little bit of hops number nine, which is uh, supposed to be barrel friendly and, uh, and no air can get in there. So I think that's a good idea. I want to make the distinction between one of these and, and the uh, the boar snakes that you might see for sale in a store. Um, the boar snake is really kind of a quick and dirty cleaning tool. Um, this is not really uh, intended to be a cleaning tool, although like I said it does patch out the barrel. The uh, the boar snakes that you can buy uh, commercially have a little bit of a uh, um, the, the leading uh, part of the, the uh, of the boar snake has a, a, br a, a bronze brush um, manufactured into it so it does brush it out a little bit. But, um, but something like this is uh, a very uh, cheap and easy way for you to protect your barrel, leave it in there. It does do a quick and dirty cleaning, probably not quite as good as what you might get from that, uh, the boar snake, but it's not really intended for the same thing. It's, it's just something that you leave in your barrel to protect your barrel for the long term. And after looking at that video, you can see that uh, that's one year. Now that gun was not, that gun was left in a gun cabinet, okay? Um, it was not left in a gun case. The gun case itself might actually inhibit the flow of air and maybe, I don't know, um, but that might even have a factor to uh, control how much corrosion is gonna, gonna occur. But uh, by putting one of these boar snakes in it, come on, uh, you know, you buy this stuff at the dollar store and uh, you know, it doesn't cost you much to make something like this and look at the protection you're gonna get. So um, it's a good idea, I think, and uh, I hope you give it a try. So thanks for watching.